Hey guys, Jay here with Word of Advice TV. Most of you already know this, but for those who don't, I fix appliances for a living, and every house that I go to, I actually write down each address and briefly what I did at that house. This is from pre the previous year. As you can see, there's just orders after orders after orders after orders of houses that I did. So I actually went through this uh, the summer season, and I put check marks. What is this, May? Probably into June. I put check marks on all my AC calls from last year and one month of this year and I got a total of 242 calls that I check marked like that and then I went through and wrote down what I did in each one of those calls I got a total of 242 calls this is all the different scenarios that I went through all the different fixes and then I numbered them all from top to bottom which were the most popular fixes and which were not so much so this video is going to be about the top 10 most common AC problems. Coming in with an overwhelming first place is a bad capacitor. Out of those 242 calls, 52 of those were a bad capacitor inside the condenser unit. A lot of times when the capacitor goes bad, it'll bulge out on the top. Sometimes, it's rare, but sometimes the whole top will actually pop off and you'll have that dielectric grease all over your electrical section there too. But, there's other times when the capacitor actually looks good, yet it's still dead. And the only way to really check that is to use a meter or you can just blindly replace it because that is the most common fix. And capacitors do just die with time, it's normal, but what speeds up their death is a very dirty condenser coil. You should clean that frequently or if you have a dirty inside filter, a lot of times it's kind of might be a coincidence but it seems like when the capacitor is dead and they go inside and check the filter a lot of times that furnace filter will be really dirty as well also after a big thunderstorm seems like it takes out a lot of capacitors too like the next day or two we have a bunch of capacitor calls and I do have a whole video of how to check your capacitor and replace your capacitor I'll put that in the description below and coming in in second place is a unit low on refrigerant or low on freon and here's something you should understand about that an AC is a permanently sealed system, meaning whatever Freon is in there, stays in there for the life of the unit. It's not like gasoline where you have to occasionally pour some in. So if some is missing, that guarantees that you have a leak somewhere. Either in the outside unit here, in the coil that's on top of your furnace, or in the line set in between, usually at one of the braze joints. So you could call a technician and get that refilled, but do keep in mind that with time, that inevitably will leak back out. Usually it only lasts one season, because it is a pressurized system, so even during the winter, it's slowly leaking out. And if you hire somebody to fix that leak for you, they say that 80% of the time the leak is found in the A-coil, which is on top of the furnace. That leak typically cannot be repaired and you have to replace the whole coil. Because the solder joints are so close to each other, when you start melting one of them to fix it, the one right next to it melts as well and creates a different leak. And a coil alone is anywhere from 600 to 1000 bucks. And then you add the trip fees, the labor fees, and part fees that they will tack on to that, it gets pretty expensive to fix a leak. So most people would rather spend a couple hundred bucks every year refilling it, or they just replace the whole thing altogether. And just so you know, a lot of times when you're low on Freon, the coil that's inside on top of the furnace will freeze over. Also, if you come outside and you see your thick suction line frozen, and if you look inside and you see your compressor frozen, that means that the coil that's on top of the furnace is just a solid block of ice. Because it starts freezing up from inside and then goes outside. If you see a lot of ice, you might as well turn your AC off because it's not doing much cooling anyway. Just set it to off and turn your fan from automatic to on so the fan inside of the furnace will keep running to thaw that ice out. And when that block of ice does melt, a lot of it will actually run down the side of your furnace and it'll pool up on the bottom like you have a big leak coming from your furnace. So it might be a good idea to put some towels around it or if you have some boxes or carpeting around your furnace, you might want to move those away when you turn the fan on to defrost the ice like that because there will be a lot of water coming down. Coming in in third place is a plugged condensate drain. So you'll come to a house and there's water leaking all over the furnace. The AC is cooling great, yet there's water leaking everywhere. Sometimes what's plugged is actually the hose that comes from the drain fitting from the AC evaporator coil up on top of the furnace there. But most of the time it'll be the fitting that's plugged up. And you can either blow that through or take the hose off, take the fitting off and just clean it all out. And I have a video showing you how to do that as well. I'll put that in the description below. Coming in in fourth place is a bad control board. So I'll come to a house and either the control board is not sending power to the outside unit when the thermostat is calling for cooling or sometimes it'll be doing wacky stuff like turning on the furnace at the same time as the AC is running. 
or it could have a bad fan relay on it so it's not sending power to the blower motor so the ac turns on but the blower motor in the furnace does not and when that happens when there's no airflow your coil that's on top of the furnace will freeze over in like a minute and the longer you run it the thicker that ice layer will be on that coil and the longer it'll take to thaw that thing back out and of course the fix for that is replacing the control board coming in at fifth place with 12 calls is a burnt out condenser fan motor so what that'll look like usually i'll come to somebody's house turn on their ac the compressor will start running but the fan will not and eventually you'll feel a lot of hot air coming out because that compressor is overheating and it'll probably trip a breaker. And usually if you take a screwdriver and try to spin that fan blade, you will notice that it's really stuck and it does not spin freely. You can try to take the motor out and oil it, but from what I've seen in the past, oiling it does not really do much good. In like a week or two, it will seize back up again. So the fix for that is replacing the whole motor. And generally when we replace the motor, we always replace the capacitor as well. And in sixth place, we have a two-way tie, both of them having 11 orders. The first one is a burnt out blower motor inside of the furnace. That one's pretty simple. A lot of times it'll smell like a burnt electrical smell. And if you take off the bottom door in your furnace, reach in there and try to spin that blower wheel, usually it'll be all seized up. Or once in a while, you'll come to a house where the blower motor is humming. And if you give it a spin, it'll actually turn on. What that means is that the capacitor for that blower motor is dead. You can replace that capacitor and get it to work, but a lot of times I end up coming back out in like two weeks because the blower motor burnt out anyways. So generally, if a capacitor is fully dead for a blower motor, we just replace the motor as well because it doesn't have much life left in it. And the other problem coming in in sixth place with 11 calls is a compressor that is shorted to ground. So I'll come to somebody's house and usually the complaint is that the AC circuit breaker just keeps tripping. So you go to the breaker, you reset it, turn the AC on, and bam, right away it trips the breaker again. So I would come out here, check for any broken or burnt wiring, and then take the top off, take the wire connectors off of the compressor pins, and then I check those compressor pins to the actual casing of the compressor to see if the windings are shorted to the casing of that compressor. If they are, then the compressor is shot and it needs to be replaced. That is also a very expensive repair, so a lot of people just choose to get a new unit. Coming in in 7th place is a very dirty furnace filter. A filter is a very easy thing to forget about and some people forget about them for a long time, like a year or two, and when you pull that thing out, it's like black. And when your airflow is restricted that much, it's almost like the blower motor is not even running, so the coil on top of the furnace will freeze over. So don't forget to change your furnace filters regularly. The worst one I've seen is it was so plugged that the blower motor actually sucked the whole filter in and it got wrapped all around the shaft. And man, it was really hard prying that filter off that shaft. And by the way, the filters are directional. Usually there's an arrow on the filter that says airflow this way. That arrow should be pointing towards the furnace or the blower motor because usually that side will have a net on it to prevent it from being sucked in. And when people ask us what is the best filter to use, our general recommendation is a medium grade pleated filter. The premium ones where the accordion is closely knit together those tend to be a little too restrictive, and the ones that are fiberglass, either blue or green, they tend to let everything through. So a technician's choice is a medium grade pleated filter. Coming in in eighth place with seven calls is a tripped AC breaker. Now most of these tripped breakers tend to be just a nuisance trip, so you'll reset the breaker and it'll work fine for the rest of the season. But if you reset that breaker and it trips again, then you do have a problem and you should investigate because there's probably a short somewhere. Most likely a wire is broken, corroded off or melted and it's touching some metal and it's causing that AC to trip. Or it's like the scenario that I previously mentioned that the compressor is shorted to ground. And in ninth place, having six calls each, we have a five-way tie. The first of those is a unit which is completely flat. There's no Freon in it whatsoever and the darn thing is in a vacuum. It's in a negative pressure. That usually indicates that you have a very big leak and you will have no cool air coming out of your vents at all. Another one with six calls is a very dirty condenser coil. So you'll come to a house that is either tripping a breaker or it is simply not cooling the house well. You'll come outside and you'll look at the coil and there'll be like a half an inch to an inch of cottonwood, dust, leaves, and whatever else just plastering the coil. And by the way, usually the dirtiest side of the coil will be the one closest to the house because that's where it sucks in the most air. To clean that, all you need is just hose and water. The best way is to take the top off and spray it from inside out. But from what I've seen, spraying it from the outside gets the job done almost as well. 
The next one with six calls is a bad contactor. Usually when the contactor is bad, it'll be something obvious where like half of it is melted off or you'll look at the coil and it's all warped and also melted. Sometimes the contactor will have no visible damage, but if you ohm out the coil, the resistance will be way high. That way you know the contactor is bad too. And once in a while, it throws you for a loop. Then the only way to figure out that the contactor is bad is by literally ruling out everything else. And really, the only thing that could be bad is the contactor. Then you just replace it and everything starts working. That only happened to me like once or twice last year. The next one with six calls is a A-coil drain pan that is leaking. What that will look like is your AC is running great, it's draining down the hose, but at the same time you still have a puddle underneath your furnace. That usually indicates that you have a leak somewhere in the drain pan that sits below your furnace. Usually it's about an inch, inch and a half tall, and if it's metal it can rust and get a hole in it eventually. Unfortunately, most of those drain pans are welded to the underneath of that coil, so to replace that drain pan you do have to replace the whole coil. And last year I had one that had a plastic drain pan. In the winter season before that, the guy's furnace was overheating and that plastic drain pan actually warped. And that's why it was leaking all over the place and he just needed to get a new coil as well. Next problem with six calls is mouse damage. So you'll come out, the AC is not working, you take off the electrical panel, you look inside and there's a big mouse nest. You have to clear all that out and then check all the wires looking for places where the mice chewed them up. Many times you will find the mouse electrocuted on the contactor or sometimes it's wrapped around the capacitor. My record is when I pulled off the panel there was a huge nest and little mice peeking out of the holes. I found seven baby mice and one big mama mouse all alive inside the AC unit. Needless to say that was a lot of mice cleanup. The next one in ninth place is simply broken wires. Just with time the connectors that connect to the terminals the whole unit is vibrating, so with time, sometimes those connectors do get pretty nimble and they break off easily, and that's actually a very easy fix. If you see any broken wires, you just snip that piece off, strip it, put a new connector on, put it right back on, and you should be good to go. And for 10th place, coming in with five calls each, we have a two-way tie. The first of those is a compressor with locked rotor amps, which means the fan will come on, everything comes on, but the compressor will just hum every 20 seconds or so. Your capacitor is already replaced, it's brand new, yet it's still not turning on. That probably means that your compressor is drawing too much amperage at startup and it's locking itself up. A lot of times we're able to free it up and get it to run by putting in a hard start kit, the SPP6, and that usually cuts the startup amperage in half and a lot of times your compressor will start back up. Although there are times when I put that thing in and even with the hard start kit, it still does not start. In that case, your compressor is locked up and you just simply need a new one or you have to just replace the whole unit. The other one in 10th place with 5 calls is an inefficient compressor. To check that, you would need to hook up your refrigerant gauges to the ports on your Freon lines and you will find that the compressor is not pumping out the refrigerant like it should, which means the valves inside there, they're getting weak and unfortunately there is nothing you can do for that. When your compressor becomes inefficient like that, then the only fix for that is replacing the compressor. Well guys, and that was my list of top 10 most common problems that I actually came up with from my own orders. And since there's so many left, let me just briefly go over the honorable mentions. I had four calls where the furnace switch was accidentally turned off, usually by somebody replacing a filter. The furnace switch gets turned off, nothing works. So all I gotta do when I come over there is flip that furnace switch back on and everything starts working. I had four calls where the AC disconnect fuses were blown. Your disconnect is right here. Sometimes it'll have two fuses on it. Once in a while, one or both of those fuses will blow. You replace them, put it back in, and everything works great. If it trips again, that means you have a bigger problem than just the fuses. I had four calls where the evaporator coil was fully plugged. That means either somebody forgot to put a filter in, or they haven't changed their filter in a long time, or their filter is not covering the whole area of the duct and a lot of the dust is getting by. It settles on the underside of that A-coil and you can clean that yourself but it could get pretty difficult. A lot of people choose to just hire some ductwork company to come out there, rip the plenum open and vacuum it all up from underneath. Another one with four calls is a restricted metering device. The metering device is either a piston or a TXV that goes in front of your A-coil. If that's restricted, you will need a technician to fix that for you. It is a pretty involved job. And you need refrigerant gauges and other tools that most people usually don't have. I had two calls where the actual fan blade was cracked. I guess maybe there was a crack in there or something and as it spins the whole thing just flies off. So you would see a fan blade with just two blades. I replaced two of those. I had four calls where the thermostat was bad. 
So if you set it to cooling, it would not cool. But if your jumper R to Y at the thermostat, then it cools fine. That means you have a bad thermostat. Replace four of those. I had three calls where the thermostat batteries were dead. So all I had to do was just replace the batteries and everything started working. I had one call that had a bad high pressure switch, which is on the discharge line coming from the compressor. Doesn't happen very often and not a lot of ACs have that thing. But that thing was bad, I replaced it, everything started working good. I had one call where the transformer was bad in the furnace. Transformers generally don't really go bad, I rarely see a bad transformer. I had one call where the door switch was not pushing in all the way, but a lot of times it'll work for a while before that door would separate and turn the furnace off. So it took me a long time to try to figure out that actually the door switch was not getting pushed in all the way. So that one was kind of interesting. And last but not least, we have vandalism. This doesn't happen very often, so you tend to remember exactly what it was. I had two cases of vandalism. One was where a uh, lady's ex came out and he was some engineer or something. He pulled the compressor pin out of the compressor and ruptured that plug and all the Freon leaked out that way. So of course her AC wasn't working because all the Freon leaked out. The other case was also an ex-boyfriend and he went into the furnace and just took some snips and snipped a bunch of wires. So all I had to do was just splice those wires back together and she was good to go. Well guys, and that is all I had for you today. I hope you enjoyed that list. If you have any questions about that, please let me know in the comments below. Or if you have some interesting scenarios that happened to you, also please let me know in the comments below. I would love to hear from you. Also, I have a few AC repair videos, so if your AC is not working, do check those out. I'll put them in the description below. Thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to mash that like button on your way out, and we'll see you next time.